We will not cower. The president will not cower. The campaign for the president does not stop. The country does not stop. The appointment of a Supreme Court justice does not stall. The president continues to be the leader of the free world. The president is determined to move forward, and like the president, we cannot, must not, and will not surrender and hide, as if that will make the coronavirus and our problems go away. It is why the president reopened the country while others were wed to the gloom and doom scenario of hiding in the basement. It is why the economy is coming back and why America continues to be a land of hope and opportunity. Life is full of surprises, hurdles, and monumental crises for each of us. The issue is how we confront, stare down, and fight back against those crises. This October surprise, the coronavirus infection of the president, the first lady, the chair of the Republican National Committee, a campaign manager, a White House aide, former counsel to the president, three members of the president's debate team, and three United States senators is to some a crisis of unimaginable proportions requiring the stoppage, slowdown, a pause in the business of this country, but not to President Donald Trump. But I had no choice because I just didn't want to stay in the White House. I was given that alternative. Stay in the White House, lock yourself in, don't ever leave, don't even go to the Oval Office. Just stay upstairs and enjoy it. Don't see people, don't talk to people, and just be done with it. And I can't do that. I had to be out front, and this is America. This is the United States. This is the greatest country in the world. This is the most powerful country in the world. I can't be locked up in a room upstairs and totally safe. and. Uh, just say, hey, whatever happens, happens. I can't do that. We have to confront problems. As a leader, you have to confront problems. And since then, the president has profusely thanked the hospitals and institutions who have been fighting the virus, and he continues to do so today. There are those who have spewed stunning hate. Sick and in isolation, Mr. President, you have become a symbol of your own failures, failures of recklessness, ignorance, arrogance. Not worthy of comment. Those who spread lies about the dire straits the president is in. Lies that were contradicted by his own doctor. The team and I are extremely happy with the progress the president has made. Thursday, he had a mild cough and some nasal congestion and fatigue, all of which are now resolving and improving. Now more than ever, we need to believe in the power, strength, perseverance, and determination of the man himself. I've often said that President Trump is like the character that goes into the lion's den, comes out with a pelt over his shoulder and his tie straight. But not only the man, the innovation and advancements in American therapeutics and a vaccine soon to be available are typical of American ingenuity. Americans deal with whatever is thrown at them. We do the best we can to protect ourselves, our family, and our friends. We learn who is vulnerable, and we take the appropriate precautions. We deal with it. As patients, we fight to survive because we have no other choice, and we move forward just as this country does. We may still be in a crisis, but we face it head on. We know that cowing to an illness, just like shutting down the country, creates even more problems, social problems, mental health problems, criminal problems, enormous injury and illnesses with devastating results. We will not cower. The president will not cower. The campaign for the president does not stop. The country does not stop. The appointment of a Supreme Court justice does not stall. The president continues to be the leader of the free world. There is no crisis or national security threat. The president is not sedated. The president has COVID, but he is capable of carrying out his duties, making decisions and going forward. This president is a man who never gives up. He never runs away. He never cowers. He always perseveres and he always triumphs. He is in the greatest nation on earth. He has the best medical care. And he has the prayers of the American people, and the force continues to be with him. Our job right now is to continue to move forward, to make sure that this does not affect the campaign or this country in any way. 
so that when the president steps out and hits the ground running, that we are there to support him and to continue the dreams, the hopes, and the aspirations that make this country the greatest country on earth. And that's my open. Tonight, I received a phone call from the White House operator who said the president wanted to speak with me. I was stunned. I didn't believe the mainstream media telling us he was at death's door, but I certainly didn't think he'd be in the mood to chat. But sure enough, against all odds, he was his energetic spirit itself. His voice was strong. He told me his biggest concern was he didn't want us to worry about him. He said he was feeling better and he hopes to be back on the trail soon. He talked about the employment. He talked about the stock market. But I got the chance to tell him on behalf of all of us that although he's faced such venom and hate from the left, his remarkable strength continues to guide us all. So I just want to thank everybody out there, everybody all over the world, specifically the United States. The outpouring of love has been incredible. I will never forget. Thank you very much.